glad to have you back. Now to the report of what should have been the confirmation of the chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. The acting anti-graft agency chairman, Mr. Ibrahim Magu, making his way into the Senate chamber. He's here for a second time in the hope of being confirmed as a chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The door to the Senate chamber is shut as lawmakers in a closed-door meeting discuss whether to confirm Mr. Magu and four others as EFCC chairman and members of the Anti-Grafts Commission. Of the nomination of the chairman... But moments later, the Senate spokesman tells journalists the outcome of the executive session. The Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria wish to inform the general public that based on security reports available to the Senate, the Senate cannot proceed and confirm the nomination of Ibrahim Magu Mustafa as the executive chairman of EFCC. Accordingly, the Senate hereby rejects the said nomination and has returned the said nomination to Mr. President for further action. Thank so you, you don't want to make any reaction? Please. The acting EFCC chairman was seen leaving the National Assembly complex. Uh, do you have anything to say concerning uh, the screening? Uh, the body language from the Senate has suggested that the confirmation of Mr. Magu is not as straightforward as it would seem as the confirmation was postponed twice. With the Senate throwing back the nomination of Mr. Magu to President Buhari, it is not clear at this point what the president's action will be. Nevertheless, the Senate president went ahead to welcome and swear in three lawmakers from River State. Senators Magno Zabi, George Sekibo, and Osinaka Chuku Idozu emerged winners in a highly contested and violent senatorial election. Well, it's now time for our roundup of other activities that took place this week. The Senate is demanding the resignation of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Babachir Lawal, over his involvement in a 223 million naira contract meant for the humanitarian crisis management in the Northeast. In an interim report by the Senate Ad Hoc Committee investigating the mounting humanitarian crisis in the Northeast, the committee stated that the presidential initiative on the Northeast awarded contracts to top government officials, friends and family members. The investigation of the committee further showed that a 223 million naira contract was awarded to Roller Vision Engineering Limited, which is anchored by the SGF, to carry out information and communication technology services. In the report, it further stated that although Mr. Babachi resigned the directorship of the company in September 2016, he is allegedly still the signatory to the accounts of the company. Lawmakers seat. say this is against civil service rules and the SGF must be prosecuted. Most of the contracts awarded by Pine have no direct bearing or impact on the lives of the displaced persons apparently languishing in hunger, starvation, disease, squalor, and other deplorable conditions in all the IDPs, that the presidential initiative on the North East took on due advantage of the provisions of the Emergency Situation Contract Award in the Procurement Act 2007 to over-inflict contracts. Not only that, contracts were awarded to companies belonging to top government officials, cronies, family members, and close associates. For example, Roller Vision Engineering Limited, incorporated in 1990, with RC number 1598-55 at the Corporate Affairs Commission, Abuja, to carry out information and communication technology services anchored by engineer Babachir Lawal. If you don't understand the name, it's engineer Babachir Lawal. Uh, the current secretary to the federal government was awarded consultancy contract for the removal of the invasive plant species in Yoba State on 8th of March 2016. Although engineer Babachir resigned the directorship of the state company in 2016, which was confirmed, it is a uh, September 2016, which is a record. Uh, it is a record that he is still the signatory to the accounts of the company. The House of Representatives has commenced an investigation into the massive deforestation taking place in different parts of the country.
The chairman of the ad hoc committee investigating the matter, Rep. Uche Naeki, says the committee intends to look into the corruption that has crippled the environment with its attendant effect on the climate. The chairman also emphasized the determination of his committee to ensure that funds meant to address these challenges are accounted for. Nigeria is estimated to be losing an average of about 409,650 hectares or 2.38% annually through deforestation, with attendant adverse effects in different facets of life, including the ecosystem, agriculture, health, environmental degradation, climate change, economy, and security. Proactive measures must be taken now to avert total destruction of our once enviable forest. We have resolved to carefully scrutinize the procedures for using our forest and the regulations for undertaking lumbering activities in Nigeria. We will not shy away from ensuring that the exploitation of our vast forests and its resources are done in accordance with extant rules and regulations, as well as global best practices for engaging in lumbering businesses. We will ensure that all funds meant for deforestation Desertification, afforestation, and reforestation purposes are properly accounted for, and the purpose for sub programs actualized. We will name individual institutions and organizations where necessary. The meeting was well attended by the Minister of Environment, Amina Mohammed, who also contributed to the discussion at the hand. And whatever forest um, cover that we have, the RED program is set up to try to protect it. Um, and I, I believe that one of the challenges that we had in the pilot project of Cross River was that so much was being invested in that state on the forest program, but there was also the issue of the uh, superhighway that went through that was in effect being seen as a, a deforestation program. So there was a bit of a contradiction. That we have tried to address. Uh, it is still uh, a work in progress and uh, we haven't completely satisfied um, the funders. Um, but I believe that it is a program that we've convinced them sh should continue and should be expanded in Nigeria. It's important that um, we protect the forests, we replenish them, and that we get the carbon credits because they do result in revenues that can come in to do afforestation. The activities that we would expand on, uh, that we started with, uh, reducing the emissions from, a forestation, from deforestation, um, reducing emissions from forests, this is all really to do with climate change. Um, uh, from forest degradation, conservation for carbon stocks, uh, better management, because it's not just about protecting the forest, it's about managing it. So even if you have to take some of the species down, there is a, re there is a reforestation that happens. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives Committee on Police Affairs during the week General. met with the Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Abdurrahman Dambazo retired, and officers of the Nigeria Police Force to review the 2016 budgetary performance of the police and the Minister of Interior. The Chairman House Committee on Police Affairs, Rep. Hallerujika, however, asked that the Inspector General of Police must appear before the committee on the review of the 2016 budget. During the week, the Minister of Sports was also before the House Committee on Sports to review the 2016 budget of the ministry. The Chairman and members of the committee took the Minister up on release of funds for the 2016 Rio Olympics Games. Before we left for Rio, we wrote and requested for the release of monies appropriated for in the budget, and it has not been released for the federations. 450 million was appropriated for Olympics, and we spent far, far, far beyond that. So that cut could not, monies that, give, could, that, that were given to the federations could not have been monies meant for uh, Olympics. The, the funds spent were properly spent because we got them from intervention funds. We got these funds from intervention funds. From Mr. President. Now, are these decisions taken by the lawmakers to your liking? Or do you believe it should have been otherwise? Well, you can write in and let's have your views on the program using any of the addresses on the screen. It's at this point we'll call it a day on the program and let's do it again next week. I'm Lan Ray Lassese.
Take care.